Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. In our first story, a choosing beggar seeking a female roommate. Let's jump right in. $450 Wicker Park seeking female roommate. Close to Blue Line, pretty much brand new condo. Three decks, including a private roof deck, blocks away from the Blue Line, North Avenue bus, and Western Avenue bus. I don't really need a roommate, but I would like a girl to live here. Don't worry about being messy or whatever. I have a cleaning lady who comes twice a month. Drinks fine. No smoking as I just quit. You can do whatever drugs you want in your room. If they're good, you need to share. <laughs> I'm a professional and barely even here. Male in good shape, 27 years old. I have everything. TV, stereo, food processor, crock pot, good knives. All you need is a bed and bedroom furniture. Rent is $450, including utilities if you are average looking, meaning a 6 out of 10. Each point up towards 10, you can subtract $100. So, if you think you're a 7, $350. 10, you pay $50. Same thing if it goes the other way. If you're a 1 or something, be ready to fork up $950 a month. I will obviously be the judge. If you want, we can also pick three people off the street and get the average of the three. Oh, and the rent can change month to month. For example, you sit around and eat Doritos with French onion dip every day and gain 30 pounds? You better be ready to fork over some dollars. How great of a person you are or your personality will have no bearing on your score. By the way, no parties. Not a lot of guests unless you're a 7 or above and your guests are equal or better females. Good luck! Story 2. Choosing Beggar Demands Help Because She's Spending Too Much A bit of context. I was working at a call center for Canada's student loan program. All federal and provincial loans. We had a repayment assistance plan, RAP for short, that would help the students repay their loans. How much RAP we offered is completely dependent on the student's family size and gross monthly income, nothing subjective. Every day we see people from all walks of life and most of them have some sort of monthly commitment that they had to deal with, whether that would be taking care of their baby, mortgages, car loans, utilities and rent. Everyone had that problem, it wasn't news. I had a student, choosing beggar, who called in asking about her rap. The conversation was as follows. Okay, so I see that your rap was refused and that you are six months behind in your payment. Huh? Why? Why are you telling me this? Explain. Do you know how hard it is to live in Toronto? I can definitely help you with that. So the reason that your rap is refused is, do you guys not know how hard it is to pay student loans? This went on for straight up 5 minutes, and 95% of the words exchanged were her confused screaming. Finally, I was able to squeeze in the fact that her gross monthly income was $5,000 per month with a family size of 1. For context, for a family size of 1, the gross monthly income threshold was approximately $2,000 per month, which is minimum wage. What if I have some serious expenses that I have to pay per month? Yeah, definitely. We do consider other expenses if the borrower has a permanent disability. Are you calling me retarded? No, but what are the serious expenses that you were talking about? You need to know that I have car loans to pay, rent to pay, groceries to buy, utilities to be paid, and I am saving up for a trip to Las Vegas. Is that all? Yes, I have to pay so much! Sorry, I don't think this is going to work. The expenses you gave barely justify why we should give you more rap, as most of the things that you listed were pretty normal for any adult. I demand a supervisor. I can definitely help you with that. Please give me a quick second, let me get you a supervisor. So I put the choosing beggar in a queue for a supervisor, and because it was a warm transfer, I had to wait in the queue along with choosing beggar while putting her on hold. Now, for most call centers, they give you a limit for how long you can wait on the line for a supervisor, which was 15 minutes. Sure enough, 15 minutes passed and I was not able to get to a supervisor. I apologetically told her that I was unable to get a supervisor and that we could set up a callback time if she wanted. Choosing beggar scoffed at the idea of a callback and just hung up. 
A few months later, I happened to check her file, which was no longer with us as she didn't pay for over nine months, and that caused her loan to be returned to the government, which means that she will no longer get any tax refunds as the Canada Revenue Agency will just use any tax refund to pay for a portion of the loan. Also, her credit score was completely destroyed as a result. Story number three, a teacher complains about 99p. Scary app. Hi, can I help? Yes, please. Why do you have to pay just to get photos of your children? I think that should change in the future. It costs hundreds of pounds a month to keep this website online and costs more to store photographs alongside other data. The price is 99p per month, which I don't think is unreasonable. I think it should change. It's only a photo. Plus, not everyone is rich enough to pay 99p a month. Are you a teacher? Yes, why? So am I, and my website is not a charity. I never said it was. You are asking for something that costs me money to be free for you to access. It should be. Now buy. And how do you propose I fund it if it's free for everyone? Whatever. Bye. Story number four. Choosing beggar roommate wants me to buy new stuff and leave my old stuff. I recently bought my own place. I am super excited and I paid a pretty penny for it, but so glad I get to live on my own now. Previously, I was living in a house of four people. I had lived there the longest and I'd say at least 70% of the common area things were mine. Silverware, one of the couches, plateware, cookware, appliances were pretty much mostly mine. My roommates were always allowed to bring their own stuff, but most didn't since it was already provided. When I announced I was moving, two of the roommates realized that a lot of the house was going to go, so they got ready for my soon departure. Then came our fourth roommate, Will, the choosing beggar. Will was not a bad guy, but he was cheap. After I announced I'd be leaving, he asked me if I was taking my things. I told him, of course I was. I didn't want to rebuy anything. The next thing threw me for a loop. He asked me why I would take my things to my new place. I said, because they're mine. He then asked me why I would do that when they would be left with nothing. I told him, that's not really my problem. These things are mine and I'm entitled to take them with me. He tried saying that since he has washed and taken care of these items, he has a claim to it too. I honestly couldn't believe what he was saying. I told him that would I have a claim to your car if I paid for some of the gas or washed it? That shut him up. After I moved out, taking all of my stuff, my other two roommates learned just how much of a choosing beggar Will was. In order to replace what I was taking, they split up the missing items between each person fairly, so that no one had to break the bank. For example, one person would buy a set of plates, while another buys pans of equivalent value. Will only bought some cups. Story number 5. TripAdvisor Review of a Maui Beach not a beach for romance or wedding pictures. The beach was clean and a beautiful sight, I give it that, but it was always cloudy here or rain every time I came to the side of the island. I thought it would be a little more private with upper class people here or family friendly like the other side of the island with beaches. I was under the impression that I could get beautiful wedding pictures here on the beach since I just got married here. Disaster, disaster, disaster all the way around. The beach was crowded for the sunset. Tons of 20 year old kids that were disrespectful. Plus the tons of people would not move out of the way for our wedding pictures. They gave us dirty looks like we had no right to be here. Wow, me and my husband were shocked with our kids. We are Christians and never been treated like that before. We ran into a lot of drunk people. No compliments out of their mouths. I would not recommend this beach for lovers or happy Christian families with small children, or even just getting married pictures. Very, very bad experience here. God bless. Thank you for hearing what is in my heart. Story number six. I'm a wedding photographer too, so I get to rip you off. Clients from hell. I'm looking for very edgy photos for my wedding. Should be an all day job with six hours of post photos with the wedding party. I'll need a DVD of all the edited photos in high resolution and you will be compensated $150. I may also be willing to let you do a trash the dress shoot with me the next day. 
In response, I sent a short but polite email stating I could not meet the requirements at the quoted rate. Look, asshole, I know how the business works. I've been a wedding photographer for 15 years and I make over $8,000 a day. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, subscribe and click on that notifications bell. We'd love for you to drop a like, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.